Awesome. All right. It's looking like we have a pretty great crew here, so I'll go ahead and start getting into it. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm Olivia. I work as a content strategist on the support Spectora marketing team. So excited to have you here today to talk about email marketing. It's really um, a cornerstone of your marketing and just such an exciting topic for us. And I'm super excited to pass you on to James Omdahl. He is our head of marketing here at Spectora, and he is a true expert, um, tons of years of experience in the field, and I have seen the presentation he's about to put on today, and I have learned things, and I am a marketer for my job. So I'm very excited for all of you to learn a ton of this information, especially as we head into busy season when marketing to realtors, to clients is so important. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass you on over to James. Um, one more thing just before we get started. Um, we will save time like 15 minutes for questions and answers at the end. If you have any questions, there will be a little Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen. You can write all the questions in there. And if we're not answering it um, right as you ask it, that's just because we're saving it to the end so we can answer it where everyone can see and learn from the questions you're asking. So with that said, I'll pass you on over to James. All right. Thank you so much, Olivia. I really appreciate that. Uh, hey, everybody, super excited to do uh, this webinar with you today, a follow-up to our Email Marketing 101 webinar, where we spend a lot of time talking about the development of content, how we should write and structure emails, all that good stuff. But today, I want to talk about what and when to send to boost your revenue. Um, super, super powerful tool uh, in email marketing for home inspectors, and really excited to dive into it. Uh, but before we get into it, I do want to start off with a quick poll. So this should pop up on your screen here. And question here today is, is why are you here? Uh, what brings you in? Um, so if you want to go ahead and click on your answer, uh, we have everything from I don't know much about email marketing and want to know more all the way to uh, you kick butt at email marketing. And you're just here to laugh at me, which uh, I appreciate too. Uh, so feel free to put those answers in. I see them rolling in right now. Uh, let's see here. So we're really, we'll uh, come to an end here. So basically what our results are is a majority of people don't do any email marketing, um, about 40%, 38% uh, do some email marketing, but you're not sure you're doing it right. We have 16% saying that their email marketing is working well, but they want to do better. And then finally, uh, three of you, 5%, are very excited to laugh at me today. So very glad you're here too. Uh, so we'll end the poll. So the question today is why email marketing? Because quite honestly, if you think of all the cool things marketing people do, um, email marketing might seem a little uncool. Um, it's been around for a while, right? Uh, it's one of those things that, you know, we've all likely had email addresses for uh, decades now. Um, we know emails come into our inbox a lot trying to sell us stuff, which we might not appreciate. So why are we doing this today? And the first number I'll throw out to you is 4 billion. There are 4 billion daily email users out there. And as a marketer, you're always thinking of, you know, where are your customers at? Where are they spending time? What are they doing? And going into their inbox is one of those things. 99% of people with an email address check their email every single day. So you know that's where their eyeballs are, and you know that's where they're looking for information and messages, um, and obviously sifting through a ton of spam and things that they don't want in there uh, to find the good stuff. Also, and this is a really interesting one, for when you're talking to marketers, 77% have seen an increase in email engagement, so people opening emails and people interacting by clicking through those emails in the last 12 months. So people aren't basically utilizing their email less, and they're actually opening more and looking at more. So that's a really interesting stat. Email really isn't going away. But I think the last and most important thing here is you like money, right? Uh, it's just a guess. But I think, you know, you're in business for yourself. You're trying to grow this business. Um, are you working for somebody who's trying to grow a business? Like money is good. And this is the thing that really blows my mind is, if I told you that for every dollar that you spent on email marketing, you would make $36 in return on average, would you spend that dollar? I think you would, right? It's just an easy, easy equation. 
If I spend a dollar and make 36, that's great. And Constant Contact did a study and found that brands that use email marketing are seeing a 36 times return on every dollar that they spend. So as a home inspector, and this is really where we get into upsells, right? If you're using email marketing to get those ancillary services out, you can probably even get a better return than this on your email marketing. So that's why we're focused on this today. It's super, super important. Today's topics, we have three of them. So segmentation, customer journey, and automation. So segmentation, how do we split up people and make sure that we're getting them the right message? Customer journey, how do we understand what people are going through in the process? of the home inspection um, pre, during, and post, and how do we use email to help enhance and improve that experience? And then finally, automation. How do we do this without having to be the person who's constantly sitting at the desk, typing out emails and sending things out? And you might ask why these three topics today? So in a HubSpot study, they found that the most effective strategies for email marketing campaigns are subscriber segmentation. So we'll be talking about that. Message personalization, which comes directly from understanding a customer journey. And email automation. So these are the most effective ways to be doing email. That's why we've chosen this for Email Marketing 201. So let's start with segmentation. Uh, so segmentation is dividing your target market into approachable groups. So you're trying to split the people up based off of things you know about them. So you are sending them the appropriate message. It's going to make the most sense to them and also feel like it's a very personal, directed and targeted message. Segmented emails drive 30% more opens and 50% more click-throughs than unsegmented. So those are two big numbers we look at in email marketing, right? How many people are opening, which generally means how good is your subject line? And then the other 50, or and the 50% number is click-through rate. And so click-through is people clicking through on a link in your email to go do something, which if you're sending an email, as we learned in Email Marketing 101, there should be a purpose to the email and some activity, some click that they want to do uh, once they receive that email. Now, when we talk about this market, there's obvious segments, right? We have the buyer's agent, the seller's agent, and the happy home buyers in the middle. Um, I joke that these two are obviously starting their home buying journey uh, because no couple looks like that after they've looked at 50 homes and have been rejected on offers. Uh, but, you know, you have these three groups. Obviously, recent events with NAR make the dynamics of this talk today a little bit interesting. We're not totally sure what's going to happen with the market, what the role of the buyer's agent is going to be in the future, what the seller's agent is going to do, and how much the home buyers are actually going to be involved in choosing uh, their home inspector in the future. So, uh, you know, we're talking about today. This could shift tomorrow, and we'll pepper a little bit of that in as we go. Now, when we're thinking about our segments, it's really important to think about the goals that people or that we have uh, when we're sending messages to these different groups. So you want to really think through when I'm talking to the buyer's agent, the home buyers and the seller's agent, what kind of information and what kind of uh, sort of feelings are we supposed to are we trying to send out via our email? So when we talk about the buyer's agent, number one in the process from basically when an inspection is scheduled all the way till, uh, you know, post inspection. Um, you know, with the buyer's agent, we obviously just need to inform, you know, you, you've scheduled an inspection, your inspection is coming up, uh, your report is delivered. There's just some basic like delivery, uh, you know, sort of standard things that you're doing there. We also want to make a connection to that buyer's agent. And this is part of segmentation is making sure that you're delivering the right message so they understand that you understand who they are. Uh, so making sure that you're connecting with them by sending them information, talking to them in a way that makes sense to the relationship you've established or have yet to establish. Um, and then the next one is delivering value, right? You want to be able to deliver value, deliver information, be able to send things uh, to those individuals uh, or to the buyer's agents that are going to uh, make them feel like you are doing something good for them, not just saying, hey, give me the money, I'll do this inspection, uh, whatever, who cares, right? Uh, next one, drive repeat business. When you have good email communication throughout the process between you and a home buyer and you and the buyer's agent, that buyer's agent is more likely to use you in the future. So you really got to think about these communications and we'll talk through what those are in the customer journey. 
Now, for home buyers, we're still trying to inform, right? Make sure that they know what's going on, what's coming up next, what the process is. You're trying to build trust because having a trusting relationship with these home buyers is going to make your job a lot easier. If they have a good idea of who you are, what you've done in the past, and they think you know what you're doing because you do, uh, they will more likely be a better client for you and they will uh, ask better questions. They'll be more involved. Calming down the home buyer is another one, right? You want to set them up to not overreact to what you find in the house. So give them information. Again, educate them. Tell them, hey, in this area, we may find these defects. Uh, that's okay. Uh, we'll be looking for them. And they're very common because of the age of the home, the location, uh, you know, weather event that may have happened. So think of ways to calm people. This is the most important one, though, when we talk about the title of this and the very last part of the title of this webinar is revenue, uh, upselling. We want to get those ancillary services out. If you can go from a $500 inspection to an $800 inspection to a $1,000 inspection by bringing in uh, termite or mold or radon or whatever you need to, um, using email to upsell is how you increase that revenue per inspection. So that's like that one probably should be bolded and flashing. Uh, and then positive reviews, another critical thing for you. Those home buyers need to leave you good reviews. So how do you automate and build systems uh, to make sure that you're getting positive reviews for the from those home buyers every single time you do a successful inspection. And then, of course, on the seller's agent side, we need to inform. We just need to try to make a connection with them. Um, but also, it's a good chance to try to potentially generate new business. So those communications to seller agents, I think a lot of times we sort of, you know, it's very transactional. We say, hey, we're going to come to the house, make sure I can get in, blah, blah, blah. But it also is a chance to build relationships. So always be thinking about that. Now, when we think about our buyer's agents and how we segment those individuals, this is where it gets kind of interesting, right? Because with the home buyers, a lot of times you're not going to, unless you have somebody who's, you know, buying a lot of houses, making investments, things of that sort, most of the time you're going to see those home buyers once or twice in your lifetime uh, from, a, from a business perspective. Now, from a buyer's agent, these are the people that you're traditionally working with the most. And so trying to figure out ways to split these groups up and make sure that you're communicating the right message to the different segments within the buyer's agent segment uh, is really important. And so when you think about this, some good ways to think about it is the agents that you know but haven't used you yet, right? The folks that you've made contact with, the people that you might be sending uh, you know, a mass email blast to a group of people, or even better, just an individual email to, uh, to try to encourage them, number one, have them remember who you are, and encourage them to give you a shot on, your, on their next uh, inspection or, or house being purchased. Uh, next one is agents who use you for the first time. Uh, this is an important point, right? Like this is a point in your relationship where you have the opportunity after like when and after they use you for the first time uh, to build a strong relationship and also to showcase uh, the experience of having a home inspection with you and really think of it as an experience, right? Uh, from from all the emails that you're sending up, building up to this, to the driveway talk that you're having with them, to uh, post inspection report delivery and how you handle questions that come from the homeowner, uh, delivering um, you know repair price bill, repair price builder uh, reports, things of that sort. Right? You want to give them the best experience possible. So you may want to segment those brand new agents out that have used you for the first time and give them a whole other experience, uh, just to make sure that they really appreciate the work that you do. Then you have your low volume agents. And so your low volume agents are the folks that are using you, you know, once or twice, every once in a while, maybe once a month. Uh, that could just be their transactions. You know, they could just be doing low transactions and they're good kind of steady eddies for you. You get a little bit of money from them every month. Uh, but also, you know, ask the question, are these low volume agents low volume because you're the backup and they've been sending all their business to somebody else. So those are people that you might actually want to, um, you know, right messaging that's going to be a little bit more encouraging, trying to build relationships more and really, um, you know, see if you can win over business if there's business to be won. Next one, kind of the cream of the crop, your high volume agents, your VIPs, the people who use you primarily for everything that they do. They're driving a majority of the revenue to your business, but also they know you, they know your processes and they know uh, they know how you operate. So your communications may need to may need to be less to these individuals, right? You don't have to give them the whole spiel about you and your world every time that they they uh, they come and they 
schedule an inspection. Um, and if you're using segmentation, you can then make it so you're sending them maybe shorter, more direct messages, giving them the information they need, but you don't have to go into kind of the big pitch that you would for an agent that used you for the first time. And then the last and a very important one is agents who have stopped using you altogether. Uh, if you have agents that have stopped using you, that doesn't, unless you know they stopped using you for a good reason, you had a falling out or whatever, uh, most likely those agents have stopped using you. They may have tried somebody else. They may um, have moved out of the business, but you always want to keep in touch with those folks and find ways to reconnect because if there is business to be there for you uh, and get them back and win them back, like find ways to do that. Uh, so these are all different ways that I would segment out my buyer's agents. Um, and really there's different ways to do this segmentation itself, right? So there's manual segmentation, which uh, you know, God, God bless our hearts. Like if you want to do manual segmentation, please do it. Um, but it's really just like doing everything by yourself. It's kind of a wimpy way to do segmentation. You're going to be out there, you know, making little lists or you're individually sending out emails and modifying them yourself. And it's just a lot of work. So manual can be done, not the best. The next one is list based. So putting people into discrete lists and then having to manage people in and out of those lists. So if you think about that, that's going to be you saying, okay, um, here's all my like low volume agents and my VIP agents. And then this low volume just moved to VIP. So I manually go and move somebody from my low volume to my high volume list in my email system. And then I'm sending different messages that way. It's a better way than doing it manually. Uh, but we live in a world where the next option, the big beefy option is automatic, right? How do we automatically move people between segments? How do we make sure that based off of criteria that we have, things that they're doing, uh, transaction volume, all of those things, that can be used to then move people into the segments we discussed on the last slide. And so we have the ability to segment like this in Spectora in an automatic way. And that's through our tag manager. And today we're gonna to be talking about functionality that lives within our advanced tier. Um, you know, all these lessons are, are very doable. I'm just gonna show you how to do them most efficiently using advanced. Um, and it's definitely educational. Don't be worried, it's not a sales pitch. Just showing you the system and how it works. So we have this tags manager under contacts within Spectora. And if you wanna segment using that, we give you all of this great segmentation criteria and kind of let your wheels turn a bit on this one, right? If you have the ability to segment by total revenue, the date of a first inspection, maybe date of the last inspection, an inspection count, uh, revenue by the buyer's agent, seller agent, uh, first inspection date, last inspection date, you can really start drilling in and start building out these very specific segments uh, that you'll then be able to use to tailor your messaging to those different groups. And so using auto tagging in Spectora, we give you the ability to do this automatically, right? You're able to actually set up rule sets and those rule sets will then bring people in and take people out of different groups, thus giving them the right messaging when you automate your messaging, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So real quick, the process of auto tagging is number one, you name it. So in this case, let's say it's our VIP agents. Uh, you can color code it just so it's prettier and looks is easier to find when you're looking through uh, your, your different segments inside of Spectora. Then you click to make something an auto tag. That again is just making it so it automatically moves people in and out of lists. Then you have the option to choose, is this a rule for a client or for an agent? So in this case, it would be an agent. Then you get to create your first rule set. So in this case, we said um, the rule is total inspection count is greater than nine. And then you set a time frame to that. So then you say in the last 60 days. So if I've had 10 or more um, inspections with an agent in the last 60 days, I'm going to call them a high volume agent or a VIP. You also can set additional parameters using the operator, as it's called. And that's just saying or or and. So you can say and or or, which saying that sounds funny, but either one. And then basically you can do a second rule set. So in this case, let's say it's revenue based. So let's say the total revenue from this agent is greater than $5,000 in the last 60 days. So that might be you trying to capture those agents that have, you know, just real high end homes that you're charging extra for because of square footage, or maybe, uh, you know, they just have a lot of homes that they sell in an area where there's a ton of add-ons. So that'll capture both in case the volume trigger doesn't get them. Last thing you do is you click remove tag when the rule fails. That again, just makes sure that people are moving in and out 
of the uh, of the different tags that you have and into the right email communication sets. Now, if you're interested, you can go into YouTube. We have a whole auto tagging video. It's the top three uses that I made. Um, very good thing to watch. It'll kind of walk you through step by step about how to set that all up. So definitely something to check out uh, if you are interested in getting better with auto tagging or using auto tagging for the first time. So moving through segmentation, we're going to take it next into customer journey, and that's understanding the customer's experience and touch points. For us today, we're going to focus in on kind of the, the world that inspectors generally operate in when it comes to the home buyer, and that is from the point of an inspection being scheduled to sort of everything that comes after, and we'll talk about sort of the timeline there, um, everything that comes after the actual inspection itself. So why does this matter? Um, understanding the customer journey allows us to optimize our communications to align with our customers' situation, wants, and needs. This is really just us putting ourselves in other people's shoes and then trying to figure out how do we get what we want out of the relationship while also making sure that their wants and needs are taken care of and we're setting ourselves up for success in the inspection itself. Now, going back to the buyer's customer journey, and we're thinking about a buyer's mindset because that's a real big part of their journey, is uh, these folks are making the biggest investment of their lives, uh, possibly their first time home buyers, which means they're very terrified. Uh, they're exhausted. They're probably scared. Uh, a friend of mine in the Denver area here um, just told me she's looked at 50 houses with her fiance. She's put bids in on two. She's lost them both by $100,000 and everybody skipped the inspection. She looked like she'd aged 10, time, 10 years since last time I saw her. Home buying is not fun for a lot of people. So remember that when you're putting your messages together. Um, they're definitely afraid of what an inspection may find. They want you to find the problems, but they also, you know, their heart's probably set on this house at this point. So they have some worry there. And they're also just ready to get the deal done. They want to start moving. They want to move on with their life because most likely they've been sh shopping for houses for quite a while. So when we kind of outlay the home buyer journey here, we can look at like kind of the different phases. So we have inspection scheduled going to inspection day, then the inspection happens and we have kind of the last part of inspection day. And then we have report delivery itself. And then there's this big space here. And we'll talk about the ways that you fill all of these with communication. So first off, let's talk about everything that happens when somebody actually schedules the uh, schedules the inspection. So whether the agent schedules the inspection for them using your you know widget on your website or they do it themselves, uh, you obviously want to get that confirmation email out. Sounds super simple. Um, obviously that's expected, but make sure it's happening and also make sure that you look at that language on that confirmation email. Uh, see if there's ways to make it a little bit more unique or personalized. Uh, always important for every touch point, even if it's something that's very transactional, to see if you can add a little something to it. Now, here's where we get into revenue, right? So ancillary upsell coming two or three hours after they schedule. So this is you basically saying, okay, we live in an area that's, you know, it's high humidity. So we have mold, uh, we have termite issues, uh, sewer scopes are super important for a house of this age. You kind of have all these pieces of information. So make sure that you're sending your first upsell uh, message right away if they haven't added those ancillary services yet. Uh, make sure that you're getting people in and, and really just saying like, hey, it's really important uh, for this investment that you understand uh, that your sewer is not going to be a total mess uh, with a broken line. You're not going to have mold problems with remediation. Uh, you know, there's no radon. All those things, you know, give them the education, ask for the upsell and go for it. One day after they uh, sign up, I would suggest sending something along the lines of what to expect with your inspection. So this is less so about you, but more so about the process. And again, if you're a first time home buyer, this is really appreciated. Here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to look at. Here's maybe what we can't look at or are not going to be able to look at. And also in this area, here's some things that we may find. Um, give them knowledge to set them up for a better mindset walking into the home inspection. So you have a good opportunity there to kind of set the table to make your life easier on inspection day. Now, as we move a little bit further along, maybe it's a couple of days before. Um, and again, I know sometimes these time frames are like super tight, one or two days, maybe it's up to a week. So if you do have time to send it or, or kind of put it into your system, 
another ancillary upsell reminder if they haven't done any of those ancillary services. Um, you know, you're doing them a service by by trying to get them to take part in these, right? You are going to help them make a better buying decision if they know additional information about the house. So don't be afraid to ask for that sale again. Again, do it with education. And then one day before, send that reminder. Everybody gets busy. We all know how that works. So send a reminder one day before. Just make sure that people are uh, are aware that you're coming. And again, it, gets, it gives you a chance to put a little personality and set the table for them there. Uh, we do have a bunch of transactional communications I haven't put into this timeline. Obviously, unsigned agreement reminders, unpaid invoice reminders, ancillary service agreements, and invoice reminders, and then reschedule and cancellation confirmations. Um, all of that needs to be set up in the system. Uh, we have, you know, we we have that built into Spectora, so you can get all that set up right. Um, obviously, those things happen at different times, so not doing that on the timeline view. Next one is we look at the home buyer inspector journey for inspection day. So this one's pretty straightforward, but a lot of people use this meet your inspector the day of, maybe it's an hour or two before, uh, but you're sending information with a picture of your face and it's talking about who you are. And it could be setting up, you know, your background to make them feel, you know, more trust in you. Uh, so talk about where you come from, bring up, you know, your UVP. I uh, was just talking to an inspector a couple of days ago and he's just getting into the business, but he grew up in the neighborhood uh, he's inspecting in. He's lived there for 50 years. Uh, you know, it's just a great way to kind of set the table and say, look, I'm different. I know this area. You can trust me. Uh, if you got kids, pets, reptiles, uh, funny hobbies, any of those things, put those in there too, potentially. Um, always to help the, the home buyers feel more comfortable with you and maybe potentially put a bond with you two together. So uh, maybe you have a pet turtle, they're interested in pet turtles, full conversation. That's a weird example, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, it's just important to try to, to try to get some common ground between you and the home buyer and the agent even, um, so you guys can have more of a relationship during this home inspection uh, experience. And then depending on when you deliver, like if you're somebody who's, who's you know, leaving the house and publishing within an hour, maybe you don't need to thank you. That'll just be a part of what you're sending out um, with the report. But uh, if you do, say, publish the next day, you could do a thank you about five hours after, or however long after the inspection you want, just thanking them for the business and letting them know that the inspection uh, report is on the way. And then here's the really busy one, but there's a lot to do here. The home buyer inspection journey, post inspection, when we have, obviously we got the report ready, so we send that out. Um, thank you and any questions one or two days after, you know, just make sure that you make yourself available uh, because there may be questions. So make sure you're doing that. Um, as for a review, uh, hopefully you're doing that in person during the kind of the end of the inspection, but make sure you're asking for a review, maybe three or four days later, uh, you know, these times are kind of up to you, but this is a general window for them. So ask for that review. If they haven't given you a review, ask for the review again, 10 days after those reviews are gold. Don't be afraid to ask 15 days after, even if you haven't gotten a review, ask again. Um, again, it's like those reviews are so important to you selling yourself without actually being there to sell yourself online. So ask for the reviews, please. Um, then as we kind of get further on in the journey, let's say that we know that they have, um, if it's a new build, obviously they may have some sort of a warranty. I know a lot of people in this, you know, ebbs and flows, but when I was buying a house, um, you know, they, the, the home buyers paid for a one-year warranty for us as a part of the deal. So if we know that's there, let's talk about that 11 month inspection, but don't just pop up 11 months later, maybe every three months after the inspection, um, just send them some information, something helpful about how to maintain their house. Just give them something to remember who you are. So when you come back in 11 months, there's an opportunity there for them to understand the value you bring and the importance of that 11 month inspection. So you can, again, just make some more money. Now, all that said, buyer's agent customer journey, go back into their mindset, right? So they're on the brink of a payday. They want the home buyer's trust, which means they want you to really be good and turn up and 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 show off, you know, values that are aligned with them and their brand. Uh, they obviously don't want the deal to fall through because they like money. Um, nervous, 
they'll be nervous that something will be found. They know probably something will, but how you handle that and how you handle that with the home buyer is incredibly important. And of course, they're just hoping they can trust you not to blow up the deal. We all know the deal killer thing. Um, you know, nobody loves talking about that that much uh, because as a home inspector, you're just doing your job. If the house is completely wrecked, you kind of got to tell people, um, but there's ways to do that, obviously, uh, more artfully. So this journey is a lot less intense than the last one, so don't get scared. Um, but going through the, the buyer's agent customer journey here, we obviously have the confirmation email coming in. We have the thank you and any additional information one day after. This is another chance to just build a relationship. And then we have a reminder uh, that we can send one day before, just like with the home buyer, making sure that their schedule is cleared if they want to be there. Reschedule confirmation, cancellation confirmations, those are also happening if, if things are happening there. Um, inspection day, really have a good message for them. Looking forward to seeing you one hour before, um, you know, depending on your segments. If it's a VIP you see all the time, make it something nice, make it like, hey, excited to see you again. Brand new person, let's make sure we're sending them a message like so excited to meet you for the first time or to work with you for the first time on this deal. Um, thank you. Five hours after, always good to thank people. Um, I think sometimes we forget that in our society now. Uh, always good to have a thank you note that comes afterwards. And then um, report, send that to them. Repair request builder, that's going to be one day after uh, that you'll send that out um, if, if there are issues. And then, of course, a thank you and any questions three days after just to be able to keep that relationship going. And then, of course, you want to nurture that relationship over time. This is just within the post inspection or pre post during inspection time frame. Seller's agent. This one will be a lot less detailed, right? So messages to consider, confirmation, access requests, reschedule and cancel notices, maybe a one day out reminder, um, and then a thank you and a prospecting email. So all those ones you want to be able to send automatically as well. And speaking of automatically, in our last section is going to be automation. Um, and this is all about making it happen automatically. Um, you know, automation is critical and it's used a lot. Uh, you probably see this in your inbox, honestly, because there's not one person out there manually sending you those 500 uh, marketing emails a day from your favorite real retailers. But 87% of business to consumer marketers leverage automation as a part of the email strategy. Automation, I remember when uh, kind of early email automation systems were coming out and it was insane as a marketer because suddenly you realize uh, you could write one message and have it trigger and go out at any time you want uh, to match what was going on with the customer journey. And so using automation is critical, especially for small business owners uh, when sending out manual emails is a giant time suck. Uh, so definitely, definitely, definitely get on the automation train. So when to automate versus when not to. Transactional emails, reminder emails, upsell emails, review requests, and time to follow up. All of those should be automated. You shouldn't be in a situation where you're manually sending any of these things unless it's like a super, super VIP agent you have and you just want to keep things very personal. But transaction reminder, upsell, review request, time follow up, make sure you automate all that. Now on the manual front, any personal messages, very one to one. Uh, somebody tells you, you know, they, they, uh, their daughter's getting married, obviously don't set up a whole automation for that. Send them a message, you know, saying, oh, that's exciting, uh, the day of the wedding, have a great day, whatever that may be. So those personal messages are uh, really important. Specific thank yous, again, it's not something you can just kind of like set and forget and build an automation. So if there's very specific things you want to call out, don't be afraid to open up your email client and send that out. Uh, urgent communications and one-off communications, all those, you know, those can be manual, of course. Uh, so, yeah. So we'll talk about actions and actions is a part of Spector Advanced, um, but also actions really give you the power. And we'll talk about the setup of actions um, to take everything from that customer journey we just talked about and turn that into an operational system. And when you have an operational system like that, you're going to be in a fantastic situation of being able to focus on building your business through better marketing and building relationships with agents and obviously being the best home inspector you can be because you're not spending all your time sending out emails. 
Spectora actions are basically they allow you to automate your email and text communications to go to specific segments to the key touch points along that customer journey. So really it lays out your ability to go in and uh, and just build this whole kind of awesome system out that's going to help you run your business. Now, of course, this is the journey of the home buyer we were just looking at. Uh, it's big, it's long, there's a lot going on. Um, so obviously, personally sending out all these emails at the right time, totally impossible. So how do we set up actions to do this for us? So if you go into uh, your account and you have advanced turned on, and if you don't have advanced turned on, you can sign up. We have a 30-day free trial for advanced. Highly recommend it uh, if you want to start exploring some of these topics. We have some great support there to help you through the process of setup. Um, but yeah, it's actions is, is kind of the place to go. And we really see, and we've seen this with our customers, um, is if you turn on Spectora Advance and start using actions, um, we see your revenue per inspection for uh, new solos and even enterprise companies going up close to 30%. Uh, so imagine what an extra 30% would actually do for you uh, if every transaction you did was 30% higher. It's, it's a game changer, right? So definitely think about trying out the advanced trial if you haven't. So what we have is some preset categories when you go into actions, you can customize these however you want. So these are totally up to you, but we do give you a framework to work with. It's everything from scheduling and going through the entire inspection process through publishing um, and follow-ups to going to clients, buyer's agent, seller agent. It's all kind of there, at least a framework to start with. We actually, there are people out there that do produce uh, uh, action packs, we'll call them, uh, that you can purchase as well if you want to take somebody else's hard work and plug it in. So this is what the setup for actions actually looks like. So you start out by choosing a time frame. Uh, so you could say, you know, one hour after, and I'll show you. So you can do minutes, you can do days, weeks, or months. So you say, okay, one day, and then you can say before or after, and then an event. So those events are inspection requested, inspection scheduled, service add-on added or scheduling confirmation, uh, service add-on after scheduling confirmation, and agreement added after scheduling or confirmation. So you have those options to kind of start your framework. Then you also have these different options that you can set up. So you could have it only trigger once. You could have it also go on recurring jobs. Uh, send when, uh, even when notifications are disabled. So that would be very transactional emails that people need to get. Send during certain hours. So you can make sure that, you know, you're if you did, let's say a really late night inspection and then that inspection, uh, you know, you have a five hour after thank you email that goes out. Maybe you don't want it to look like uh, you know, you're up at three o'clock in the morning sending this out. Maybe you do, who knows? Uh, but you can limit those hours. So it looks like you're not a, a vampire if that's the case. And then uh, do not send on weekends. Um, this one, you know, may or not, may not be necessary. I know a lot of work happens on the weekends. Um, so you can also select that. The next thing is setting up your rules. And the rules are really cool because this is what starts bringing in some of those auto tags and it starts bringing in um, some of that segmentation information so you can make very specific communications for that customer journey based off of the different segments you've created. And so in this one, different options. So you can say they have or do not have. And then here's the different options. So you could say an agreement signed. So this is very helpful for being able to say, okay, nobody signed the agreement. You scheduled me. Let's make sure we send you a reminder there. Uh, a client tag. So that goes to auto tag um, and client agent tag, same thing. Um, so basically being able to say, okay, this is a VIP. This is my first time scheduled. This is somebody who uses me regularly, but at a low volume, uh, you can set that all up. Uh, a custom field. So if you've created a custom field uh, that you want to trigger off of, you can do that. An event name or an inspection paid. Um, so all of those things, you know, once I paid for the inspection, send them this message, all that can be set up uh, through these rules. So in this case, we say, you know, they have a client, a client agent tag, a VIP agent. So this is our email that we want to send specifically to a VIP agent. And then the next thing we do is we choose the action to send the email. And this is our email builder. We won't go through all the bits and pieces of it, but really it just gives you the option to go build out that specific email for the specific segment to be automated and automatically sent at the time that you want. 
And so when it comes down to it, it's like, yeah, time to automate. Let's go automate all the things. It's awesome. It's great. Uh, automation because robots are better than you. Honestly, robots are not better than you. And I know a lot of people get a little bit freaked out by setting up automations. Uh, but I think the reality is, is um, you know, this takes a lot of work off your shoulders. This makes you more efficient. This prevents you from forgetting to do something that could lead to a lesser experience when you do a home inspection. Um, and it just, it gives you more time. And I think we always talk about here, you know, it's, it's how do we, how do we, help you with our software, uh, save time and make more money. And automations are a massive part of that. Segmentation is a really important part of that. And understanding your customer journey is critical uh, to be able to do that. So again, this is what we covered today. Segmentation, customer journey and automation. How do we set up the groups that we want? How do we understand the process that we want them to go through to give them the best experience possible while getting the things we need? And then finally, how do we make that work easily? for us. One thing I wanted to mention before we hop into questions and answers is Spectora Academy. Uh, so Spectora Academy, if you have not gone there yet, you can get to it if you just go to our website and go to resources. There's a drop down and the first option is Spectora Academy. Spectora Academy is a place where we built out resources uh, and kind of curated our resources so you can learn how to use Spectora better. But more importantly, in this conversation is the Spectora Academy Growth Hub. We launched this recently and the Spectora Academy Growth Hub is a fantastic uh, way for you to up level your skill set. There's new content going in here all the time. This is only available to pay Spectora clients. Uh, and if you go in here, there's everything that's like 10 things new inspectors should do all the way to all the webinars we've done, some of the best podcasts we've done, sales tips, marketing tips. It's not just videos. There's actually resources that go with things. So I highly recommend you take a little bit of time today if you have some go into Spectora Academy Growth Hub. If you do have access issues, if we're telling you that you're not a client when you are, uh, there's a quick form you can fill out. We'll get you access right away. Uh, but yes, please check out the Spectora Academy Growth Hub. And with that, let's hop into questions. Yeah, thank you, James. First of all, that was excellent. I'm really excited because we have some incredible questions here. Shout out Jen, who's just been putting in some great ones into the Q&A box since pretty much the moment we started. These are awesome. So let's start out with how does email marketing differ from the client portal that allows an easy upsell at the time of service? And I can cover this one quickly to give your voice a break, James, if you'd right. like. But the real power is the segmentation and targeting that James talked about. So the client portal is awesome because if you offer an upsell, upsell option, you want the buyer to be able to see that regardless of whether they're checking their email, but it's not smart, right? So they have the option, they'll just see what other services you offer and there's no way you can target the messaging specifically to them. So Picture this, if I'm a buyer and I see that I can add on a radon inspection, or if I see that I can add on a sewer scope, I'm like, great, but maybe I don't know what those are. Maybe I don't know what the value is to me, or, you know, maybe I have some sticker shock of just like booking the actual inspection. I'm like, oh, I can't afford that as I'm booking it. What's really great about email marketing is that when you can target, you have the ability to control the message and speak to someone's specific needs and add context around why the upsell is important. So like why a radon is really important for you in your area. And then also, as James said, like sending that a little bit after I book the initial inspection with some education, I might be more likely to buy if I have a little bit of time to like settle and then also have the context around why I should be getting one of these add-on services. And again, um, I think like if you were just to send this e follow up email to everyone, the targeting is really important because like with advanced actions, um, you're able to make a rule like so no one will get an upsell email or see an upsell if they've already added the service. Anything to add to that, James? No, that was absolutely perfect. Thank you, Olivia. <laughs> Okay, wonderful. And then Jen, again, um, we currently use another email marketing campaign system, MailChimps. How does Spectora differ from them and the other means of email marketing? 
Yeah, so I think I think when it comes down to the differentiation, uh, you know, Mailchimp's Mailchimp has been around for a long time, and they've built a very good platform. Like I will fully admit that. I think one of the issues that you run into um, usually when you're talking about like a, a third party company like Mailchimp versus using something like what we've built into Spectora is the data flow and information going between the two systems. And to be honest, I'm not sure if you can how much data you're actually able to pass from Spectora into Mailchimp. But generally speaking, what I've found is if you have a system that's able to really automate a lot of the system follow-up that you're doing um, and have that in the exact same system where that information is being collected. So that's, are your, um, you know, are your agreements being signed? Are people paying? Um, is something, is an inspection being uh, scheduled? And being able to keep all that information together and in real time and being able to trigger your automations off of that, that's usually better than having to rely on a third party integration that's going to be trying to push that data back and forth. Um, you know, we do have our mass email feature. That mass email feature allows you to do some of the things that you do within MailChimp. I know MailChimp does have some, some sort of automation functionality. But again, if you don't have the right data flowing in at the right time, that can cause some of this stuff to just not work quite as well. Um, so no dissing of MailChimp because they're, they're a good company. Um, but I would say kind of having everything in one place does usually make things work a little bit easier. Yeah. And the one other thing that I've just heard from other companies who have made that switch and done their email marketing through Spectora, I actually just heard from someone who switched from using HubSpot um, for a lot of that to Spectora. And one of the biggest like values that they see is just being able to use our customer support when you have a question or when something goes wrong. Uh, it's just, again, another all-in-one functionality. So again, like MailChimp's awesome, but we've just heard it can be easier to get in touch with us when you have a question or an issue than it is for a larger company like that sometimes. Totally. Great point. Cool. Great point. All right. Um, oh, this isn't a question, but Justin just wrote in, as we have done this webinar, I have booked 1,176 in add-on dollars in add-on services with automations from inspection books booked yesterday. So um, yeah, you want a testament to the power of email automation and that revenue. Dang, this is it. Awesome. And thank you for letting us know that. We love hearing that. And it's just always cool. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Um, from Jen, timing is important. The time frame from confirmation to inspection date is often five days or less. To send out so many emails seems to be overwhelming to these buyers. Do you ever recommend a template for timing and for content? That is a great question. It is such a great question. And I think there's there's this element that we always in like Olivia and I go back and forth on this as well as we're trying to plan out communications. And Olivia's for Spectora is like the person who owns that calendar, right? Like, how do we get all the information? Because we want to communicate so much with you guys, but we also don't want to be annoying, which I feel like is sort of the source of this question is like, how do we make it so people aren't completely overwhelmed? I, I would say Part of it's a personal decision, right? I think um, one thing that I always have to remind myself is not everybody reads every email you send. So repetition at times is important and keeping the same, like adding the same information to multiple emails, if that's critical for them to understand, uh, that's important as well. So to me, I think it is sort of your business and, and seeing how that feels, but also remember that if you're delivering value in every communication you send, uh, mm -hmm. you're also um, not doing a bad thing by over communicating. If you're able to give them very specific uh, information, advice, uh, the setup for what's happening next um, in each of those steps and they're unique enough to each other, I think you'd be surprised how okay people are with that level of communication. And also remember you're a home inspector and they want communication from you, right? Like they're paying you good money to come in and learn and see and use all your expertise, but also then communicate that back. So that's kind of my opinion on it. Obviously it's a decision for every company to make, um, but Olivia, curious if you have any thoughts on that as well. Yeah, I, I have a lot of thoughts on that because Jen, just to speak to my own experience, this is a question I ask myself every day is like, how much is too much? And the biggest lesson for me has been looking at Spectora's like unsubscribes and then how many people are actually opening the email, how many people are interacting. 
And generally for me, when those numbers are pretty good and I can, I don't have off the top of my head what like the benchmark for good is, but I can send them, um, put them in like post webinar notes when we resend the, uh, send the recording out to all of you. But yeah, if you're seeing like mass unsubscribes from a ton of email sending, obviously maybe that's time to dial it back. But like James said, most of the time, if even if people aren't reading every email, over communication communication is better than under communication. Because when you under communicate something, when someone feels like they don't have all the information they need from you and that they're not aware of all the options they have, that's when people get really frustrated, right? The biggest thing with over communication with email is most of the time it says easy for someone getting that email to just delete it if they don't want to read it. So something that's been really helpful for me thinking through all of this is like, okay, when I go through my email inbox, yes, I get a ton of emails, but it's actually very rare for me to unsubscribe from someone I actually want information from. So maybe if it's like a super high touch point, like I bought clothing from someone one time and all of a sudden I'm getting a ton of emails from them, then I'll unsubscribe. But if it's like, I don't know, someone that I'm actually buying a service from that I feel like I can learn something from, like a home inspector is such a good example of that. I'm not going to unsubscribe. I'm just going to disregard the emails I don't feel like I need to see. So I wouldn't worry too much, but we will um, attach these slides when we send out the webinar recording. And I think one of the best things you can look at there is the customer journey examples that James put in and the general touch points of when to send out an email. I think that was pretty spot on for a template to figure out how often you should send. Great. Let's see. What else do we have? Some auto tagging love from Chuck. Yes, definitely. Auto tagging is cool. If you missed that feature announcement, that was semi-recently it is advanced only but it's so useful um and another question that i'm actually seeing here is what if i don't have advanced and like we talked about it's really powerful and there's been this perception that advanced is only for multi-inspector companies or only for companies growing really aggressively what we've realized um just over the years of building this product more and seeing inspectors use the product is that this can be a huge win for anyone offering ancillary services um, because it pays for itself so fast with, uh, you know, if you're putting out your upsell emails and getting those upsells, we've just seen such good results as James pointed out in the webinar, like just from the actions piece alone, you are adding so much revenue per inspection on average. So yeah, anything else to say to that, James? No, I, I think I think that's like you said, the numbers the numbers tend to not lie on that one. Again, we have a free trial so you can try it out. You know, make sure that you put a little time into getting things set up. But um, you know, it's the cost of advanced is three dollars per inspection. Um, uh, based off of our stats, your RPI goes up by 30%. Uh I have a feeling the math works out on that. So um, you know, the, it's it's just it's such a great way to uplevel your business. And we're seeing that with new inspectors even that get on advanced within the first year, they're seeing that 30% increase in RPI. So, um, you know, and we don't see that when people aren't using advanced people's RPI isn't going up at that level. It might go up a few percent, but not nothing like that. Great. Cool. Um, from Anthony, we have, are there ways to set up automation around reviews if the client has or has not submitted a review? For example, if they do a review right away, they won't get the two to three follow-up emails asking for a review. Additionally, is there a way to set up automation that asks for reviews on other platforms only after they complete the Spectora review? My answer to that is that that would be awesome. I don't think we have that capability right now, but I think it's definitely something um, there are some technical hurdles. Obviously, there's the Spectora review, which we have, you know, we can see if somebody's giving you a review on Google, um, you know, a Google review, that's harder for us to maybe detect. So there'd be some work that goes into that. But yes, like that would be uh, that would be a really good feature for us to have. Yeah, and we'll let our product team know. Anthony, if you want to just drop your, if you're still around, if you want to drop your email in the Q&A box, um, I'll follow up with you on that specifically because there may be 
at least a halfway solution there uh, that would just take someone slightly more technically minded than myself to give you a great and confident answer on that exact problem. So yeah, if you put your email in there, I promise I'll follow up with product and get back to you. Great, let's see. What else do we have? We have from Chuck. If you don't have advanced, get it. We have used it for years and it automates so much. We did 800 plus inspections last year. 2,400 for advanced is far less than the cost of the person I'd have to pay to do what's automated by advanced. Chuck, you're warm in our hearts. Thank you. And I think that also is point we didn't necessarily touch on is as far as like who advanced is for and what another value of automation is like sometimes that can not replace human labor but if you're in an in-between point when you don't know if you're ready to hire someone else yet but you know you have a lot more work than you can do manually yourself and you have a need for that like that's where automation is really really useful and we've seen it be really powerful wonderful all right, let's see, let's see, let's see. We have a lot more, but we'll probably only have a chance to answer a couple. So let's see, what sender email addresses are automated with the messages affiliated with? Is it Spectora or my business email? So that one, and tell me if I'm wrong here, but I believe you can set that to what you, whatever you want, which would likely be your business email is what you want. So, yeah. Yep, wonderful. All right, let's see what else we have here. Um, Jen, again, we use Spectora, Spectora for property inspections and have split off our ancillary services into its own company on Spectora. Our target for testing services, our target, ah, sorry, our target for the testing services company is homeowners and other property inspection, inspectors. How would this change the info for these two markets? I can read that one more time. And Jen, I'm, I'm looking at it too. I'm trying to absorb here. Um, see. So I'm not sure if I understand the change the info part, but I think either way, it's kind of going through the process of what we went through today of asking ourselves, you know, how do we segment or split these people? What's their customer journey and how do we want that to look? And then is there, are there ways to automate that? So I think in this case, you know, it is this focus on communication to homeowners and then the property inspectors would maybe be like the, the twist on this one. Um, and that one, I think, Jen, I'm guessing you have an account manager. You might want to talk to them to just get into the nitty gritty on possible ways to set that up. I, I don't want to give you some wrong information here. Absolutely. And Jen, if we are misunderstanding that question, feel free to, if you're still around, let us know. All right, let's see what else we have. Alex, the key is conciseness and personalization. I believe this was written in when we were talking about like the actual upsell emails. And I just want to a thousand times yes this. Like that's really the power of sending these. Um, also, yeah, as concise as possible because people don't like reading, they like skimming. And so if you actually go back and we'll link it um, when we send out the recording of this webinar, but in our previous webinar um, on email marketing, we did talk a lot about messaging, how to actually craft subject lines, um, messages and all of that. So yeah, encourage you to go watch that if anyone needs tips on what actually goes inside the email, but totally, totally agree. All right, let's see. We have from Nick, just want to say thanks, some awesome information today, and I love the Star Trek font. Thank you, Nick. Wonderful. All right, let's see. Um, oh, awesome. Chance is saying there's definitely a halfway solution for Anthony. So yeah, Anthony, if we can figure out how to get in touch with you, we will send that for you on the reviews. Thanks for chiming in there, Chance. Wonderful. Uh, what do you think? Do we have time for one or two more, James? Yeah. Yeah, we got three minutes. Wonderful. All right. Oh, awesome. Jen got back to us. She said, well, it is a deeper question because your software is for property inspectors working with clients, their agents, and their listing agents. Our testing services company has a different emphasis, and therefore the Spectora software is not optimized for this different business emphasis. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think what this comes down to is is are there potential workarounds? Um, and I think that would be definitely a good conversation with your account manager. You can even start at the bubble um, and they can 
start talking to you through that. But yeah, that's it's definitely a different use case than our base use case. So we want to make sure that that uh, we're having a more in depth conversation with you, Jen. But thank you for that question. Yeah, and Jen, I do want to say I appreciate how deeply you're thinking about this, and we definitely want to get all of these answered. So as James said, like for these specific use cases, working with your account manager, reaching out to our chat bubble um, is probably the best course to make sure we can get this happening for you, or at least get you answers on what's possible there. Jen saying she loves the bubble. Thank you, Jen. Oh, Rebecca, thank you for chiming in with an email for Anthony's question as well. All right, wonderful, will do. And then let's see, um, maybe I missed it. Can we see how many are unopened or deleted or marked spam? That one, we have open rate. I think we have click rate. The spam rate, do we show that? I am not 100% positive there for action specifically. I believe you can see that with Spectora's mass mail tool. But we'll get back to you on that, Tim. Thanks for a great question. Wonderful. And I think with that, we are just about at time. Um, that's all we have time for today. So thank you, James, for putting on an awesome presentation. Do you have any final words before we go? Uh, I think final words are, number one, thank you so much for being here, y'all, and sticking through to the end. Um, you know, email is such an important part of making your, your business successful. Um, we obviously have built tools on our end to help make that easier for you. Uh, so definitely explore them, do what you need to do to get yourself either spending your time doing inspections, doing marketing for your business or spending time with your family and loved ones. Uh, if you're sitting around manually sending emails, it's probably, uh, just a waste of time. So find out what you can do. Uh, make sure you're going in and checking out the Spectora Academy and the Spectora Academy Growth Hub for more tips. If you do have any ideas of of different um, of different webinars you'd like to see in the future, uh, definitely reach out. You can either go through the bubble or my email is on your confirmation for this webinar. So you can always send me an email and let me know too. Uh, we're always looking for things that you find highly valuable. Uh, but again, thank you for being here today. Yeah, thanks everyone. And if you have questions we didn't get to answer, um, I'll volunteer my personal email for that, olivia at spectora.com. So yeah, if there's anything we didn't get to or any questions that you don't feel like we're fully answered by this, feel free to just email in and we'll make sure we can get those answered for you. We will hopefully see you at the next webinar and have a great day, everyone. Bye.